5-0. And if you've been with us throughout the morning here on Eurosport, you will know that that's not good enough to put Olga into the Magic 8. Sally Wills of Australia, who put some brave performances down later on this morning. And let's see how she took to the beam. First thing. Looking anxious. Many of the gymnasts undergo training to cope with their competition. They don't just have physical preparation, but they have psychological preparation. And I think it often goes out of the window when you're faced with that theme, a crowded auditorium and four judges. Oh, stay there. Better three tenths than a four. Five tenths to a four, three tenths, almost no matter how big the wobble is. But the psychological advantage of staying on is tremendous. It really is a lovely gymnast. Look at those elegant legs, very well prepared. Flickly out, flick. And because of the length of her legs, she's restricted in her power and probably her ability to backward tumble. Should have been a change leg swiftly immediately into the gainer flick. But it wasn't. She broke the combination. But if the routine is well choreographed and the gymnast has enough skills, the coach can put several linked movements. So if one fails, there is always another later in the routine. Required elements are a flight element. Two acrobatic skills, a minimum of B, a mixed series, that's artistic and gymnastic, and a gymnastic series. Double back dismount. Tentative beginning, but Sally, a very capable, skillful gymnast, and beautiful to watch. Part of a team that's ranked sixth in the world, the Australia women's gymnastics squad, and certainly a growing force within the sport, and... I'm sure there are many purists and gymnastic fans that are as pleased as we are here at Eurosport to see the nations of the Southern Hemisphere starting to become world-renowned and pitching and battling against the more well-known and famous Eastern European countries. And I think they do have a tremendous amount of pressure on them. A, they've got their home crowd. B, there's huge sums of money been invested in sport in general in Australia, most particularly gymnastics and any sponsor wants mileage for their input into the sport and any coach wants the gymnast to prove it and uh, the young ladies and men in Australia will be, have been made aware of this and they really will, besides wanting to turn in their best performance for themselves and their country they'll want to for the sponsors so that the pennies keep rolling in and hopefully these world championships being held in Queensland, Australia will have a huge knock-on effect in the sport in Australia in general motivating many a youngster to take up the sport. First position, 8.937, and that's one that will go through to the end of the women's team, Dina Kochikova for Russia. Well, I hope she gets a better deal on being than she did on floor. Gojian pitting Kochikova on beam. really quite unjustifiably. I know looking good isn't everything. You've also got to produce the element. But she really didn't make any major errors to warrant being left out of the top three. So far, one quite large wobble, but some fabulous skills. lovely connection there, leap into the backward roll, a simple skill but done so beautifully and we've already had the full testing call but in there just as the cheapest have done it in combination no easy task dismount from flick, flick, flick to 152, double back 
Well, certainly a name to look out for for the future. She seems to have rather a bias on her skills on beam, perhaps not using all the groups required. But certainly a very good gymnast. And we'll see more of her in the future. Who knows? On the podium in the 1996 Olympics, with the all-round gold around her neck. And Monica, possibly an outsider for the all-around competition here with the nerves getting a lot the better of a lot of them the, the 9.550 Kochikova go into the lead as we take a short commercial break you to look at the action from the early morning a highlights package before we return to Brisbane for the live and final subdivision Elena Polozkova of Yellow Russia another new youngster and a new name to us here chances of meet, meeting the final requirements gone altogether but a very dramatic piece of music and a well executed pull in back out but she sat down out of the floor so she'll still lose the penalty for falling can you believe having too much power out of the full twisting front somersault brilliant but she was either totally confused because she'd never made such a big error before or totally overawed by the situation of being on an international scene well a youngster a long way from home in her first world championship and it's my belief monica that the occasion possibly getting the better of her and if she'd not made such a great error earlier on in that performance maybe she'd have been able to have carry it through but so far, she was the best natural tumbler that we've seen, even in the live production. Eve Marie Poulain of Canada. Five meter run permitted. And they're attempting a front walk out, but under rotated. Front somersault, a very popular mount because it's high ranking. And really, all gymnasts can produce a front somersault. And those who have the gut to have a go, it's a really good scoring move, but not many of them can finish it off. standing front to one leg. Quite amazing to think that we take a routine like this for granted because in there there are front somersaults and straight back somersaults to one leg and I'm about to say that it won't meet the requirement. Painful but I'm sure she's done it before. Every gymnast needs a saddle at one time or another but it generally happens in training. But I was about to say that in 1976, Olga Corbett produced her first cutback somersault. And just think where gymnastics has developed from then. Straight back somersault. Seen two with a full twist today.
Waiting a long time. She's over time now. Two tenths penalty. 